So today, I'm going to, remember, I'm, I'm going to be more teaching than preaching. That's what I'm going to be doing now. I'm going to be more teaching than preaching, so it helps me not to sweat a lot. Um, so it helps me to, to look like a gentleman, you know. Yeah, so if you preach sometimes, it's like you can wear your track suit, you know, and feel free to preach. And so, so today I want to tackle... I want to tackle the title that says under the un, under our under our umbrella topic uh, church growth challenge. I want to tackle this is part two. I want to tackle the uh, uh, the subject living a life of service in the house of God. Somebody say living the life of service in the house of God. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's very important for you to know because. God wants us to serve him. Did you hear that? God wants us to what? Serve him. In the Old Testament, the Bible says that you shall not serve other gods. You know, you shall not serve their God. God says when they come to, to, to Canaan, he said that you shall not, you're going to go to Canaan, you're going to have everything that you want to have and desire, but do not serve their gods. You're going to understand as we get to the subject, why did God say they must not serve uh, other gods, you know, because whatever you serve controls you. Did you hear that? Whatever you what you serve controls you. Uh, when you serve, you need concentration, you need attention to that thing, you need focus to that thing, and all of that, and it end up what controlling you. And when you are concentrating on whatever, then you are taken away from other things. Sometimes that. Uh, matter. Now, the first thing that we have to check when we have to check the issue of service, or you say serving in the church, is that we need to know that Jesus has, has, um, has, has demonstrated or given us an example. Let's start by the like, Christ example of service. In the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 45, book of Mark chapter 10, verse 45, the Bible says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. To give his life as a ransom for many. Are you hearing, are you, do you see that? He said that the Son of Man, who's the Son of Man? It's Jesus, right? He talks about himself. He said, I came to the world. I did not, he had his disciples. He had his disciples. He had his disciples who were preparing uh, food. Uh, you know, the, those who were preparing food. He had, he had Mary. Uh, uh, the, the, the sister of Lazarus that would prepare. There were people who were serving Jesus, serving around Jesus. But even when Jesus is served, but it says that the reason I came to the earth, it's not that you should serve me, but serving me makes my ministry of serving possible. Are you hearing that? So some of you don't understand that as I'm standing before you, I'm serving you now. Okay. If I preach God's word to you, I am serving you now. So that's the reason you are sitting down like that. You're like in the, in, the, in the restaurant and I'm the waiter going around, you know, and giving you the menu. But unfortunately, I don't give you the menu that you ordered. I'm giving you the menu that the master says I must give to you. So that is the difference now, right? I'm giving you what the master says I must give you, right? So, so Jesus says, I, I've not come to be served. So in other words, he says that I don't prioritize being served. But he says the son of man, he says my focus is not being served, but my focus is to serve. So other people, they don't understand that. That as pastors, our focus is to serve. Our focus is to concentrate on what God has called us to do, is to preach God's word, is to cause people, uh, the God's people to be knowledgeable about God's word, for them to know the God, God's will for their lives. So we are called for that. So Jesus says, I've come to do what? To serve. And some people would think because he's God or he's a son of God, he may say that I'm come so that you can serve me because I'm God. No, it, it, it does not say that. So he is giving us an example. Is giving us an example. Is giving us an example that even when you have a great authority, even when you have a great uh, uh, business, even when you are famous, you are powerful, you are moneyed, you must always focus on serving than being served. 
Are you hearing that? Uh, uh, look at this, please. Um, I mean, I mean, oh God, God must help us. I, I mean, I mean also, even when you have a worker in the house, as a child of God, you don't treat her like she's here to serve you. You treat her to say that my needs in my house have created an opportunity for me to serve you. For you to find something to do for your life so that I can in return serve you and be a blessing to you. And by that you will not feel like a boss. Are you hearing me? Why do I speak like this? Because some of you, God will bless you mightily. And some of you, God has blessed already. And God will uplift you. And some of you are in the process where God is uplifting you. So I want you to have the mentality of Jesus. And the Bible says, let this mind that was also in Christ be in you. So when we serve, we have to treat people as equals. Uh, I did not hear what I said. Did you hear what I said to you? We have to treat people as what? We don't let positions and titles, we don't let money and possessions to divide us from the people that God has brought into our lives. We don't let degrees, we don't let money, we don't let fame, we don't let age. Are you hearing that? We, 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 oh God. You know, sometimes Jesus Christ says that anyone that wants to be great among you, he says that let them serve, let them serve, let them go down, let them serve. Anyone who wants to be great, that's how it is. We become great by service. We don't become great by title. We don't become great by position, position, but we become great by service. If anybody wants to be great, let him serve. That's what Jesus says. Are you hearing that? Now he says, I've come to serve. One of the things that you are going to notice, okay, he says, he has come to serve. Now, number two, we're looking at the Christ, uh, Christ example, that's number one. Number two, we have to understand that we are saved to serve. We are saved to serve. Listen, I did not say that we are saved to be blessed. We are not saved to be blessed. We are saved to serve, but we are blessed to be a blessing. But to be a blessing is to serve. Does it make sense to you? So now let me give you the scripture. Um, the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. Are you getting something out of this? Um, the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. The Bible says, it says, for you, brethren, brethren, brothers, you can include the sisters if they want to be included. <laughs> For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. It says you are called to what? What is liberty? Freedom. You are called to freedom. Only do not use liberty or freedom and opportunity for the flesh. But... Through love, serve one another. So can you see that? Now, <laughs> I want you to understand that we have different types of freedom. Okay? Or we have different levels of freedom. They are not the same. Okay? If it comes to finances, we are not free the same. It comes to education, we are not the free the same. It comes to certain uh, traits and qualities, we are not all the same. Some of us are more blessed than others in other areas, and some of you know, and vice versa, and things like that. Okay, so now, so now, Paul says that Paul, Paul says that he says that you 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 have a right to be free. Remember, he speaks in the church context. He says, you have a right to be free. You have a right to choose. You have a right to live whatever kind of life you live, but just make sure that the kind of life that you live becomes beneficial to the rest of the body. 
Make sure that the kind of life you live benefits the church. Remember, if he says, serve one another, he means in the church setting. Right? So Jesus has freed us, which also salvation is freedom, right? We are freed, is liberty. Okay? But it also he says that only not use, use that as an opportunity to the flesh. Paul knows that spiritual things can trigger the flesh. There are people who are more gifted than others. There are people who are more, <laughs> there are people who are more uh, preachers than others. There are people who can teach more than others. There are people who can articulate English more than others. There are people who have got a twang and, you know, and there are those who don't have a twang. You know, there are those who speak as if they are coming down the mountain. Are you hearing that? I'm trying to say that we are gifted in different areas, you know. You know, I had a friend of mine. I had a friend of mine. He passed. You know, when he speaks English. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. ha. I said, please, my, fr my, pr my friend, please, can, you, can we go back to Zulu, please? <laughs> I, he, 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 was, he was that man. You see, no, I can't, I can't even imitate him. It was, yeah, I mean, I mean, when he speaks English, I thought he was suffering. I, I was even worried about his tongue if he should not bite himself. I was worried. Are you hearing this? Yeah. With all the category. You know. <laughs> There's different categories. And I said, mm -mm, it's, it's okay, but uh, can we go back to, to vernacular? And, uh, uh, but amazing, he was, doing, he, he was doing law, you know. Yeah. Then he, uh, he, he passed away before he practiced. But I wonder, how was he going to do at court? They were going to wait for him while he's, I, I don't know, okay. Now, we're different, but it says that we must not use our freedom. We must not use our freedom. We must not, our freedom, wherever we are free, it must not trigger flesh. What is flesh? Pride. What is flesh? Competition. What is flesh? Greed. What is flesh? Jealousy. Okay? So, because all these things that are coming from the flesh, that once they are present, service is absent. Is that clear to you? Uh, hey guys, can I tell you something? Once you are at church and you get threatened by the position or by somebody who's gifted than you who is in your department, that there is flesh. You are free, you are in the position, you are in HOD and things like that. But the more you are threatened, the more there's competition now. There's no reason why you are there. You have just disqualified yourself. Is it clear to you? So he says that we must not use all the thing, all the liberty that we have, whatever kind of liberty, we must not use that as an opportunity for the flesh. Oh, what, what, what is he saying? He is saying that our flesh is an opportunist. Huh? Our flesh is what? Now, there's a joke. There's a joke that we do with, with, uh, with Lady Bishop. You know, it's a joke. It's not serious. Eh? So, if I went and I was preaching Nigeria or anywhere, Ghana or anywhere, somewhere, how did it go? And then I said, Eish, you know what? I made them cry. <laughs> that means the service was tops. You understand that? But someone else can use that not as a joke, but as something of pride. Are you hearing that? So now, look at this place. How are you using your freedom? How are you using your blessings? How are you using, you know, you, you know, you have to understand as well that when you rob us of the talents the gifts, the skills you have that we need and you are sitting here and doing nothing. 
you are in the flesh. We have used your freedom, your liberty. Huh? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that he who knows what to do something and they don't do it. And the Bible says that if they don't do it, it's sin to them. It is sin to what? To them. If, 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 if you are able to do something and it's needed and you choose not to do it, then the Bible says it's sin to you. The Bible did not say it's sin to God. In other words, the Bible says shame on you. Not is sin to God, but it says it's sin to him, the person who's supposed to be doing something, and they don't do it, but they know they can do it, and they know that it's needed that they do it, but they choose not to. Are you hearing that? So he says that we use the freedom to serve one another. We use the freedom to serve one another. I use my academic self to serve the other person who needs that at that time. Is that clear to you? So we are born again and we are saved to serve. This is the main thing. In the book of John 13 verse 14. John 13 verse 14. The Bible tells us in this chapter that at the table Jesus Christ with his disciples they were about to eat uh, it's amazing. You know, they did not only wash hands, they wash also feet before they ate. You see, the washing, uh, <laughs> you see. Hey, I, I know some other people who say, we must do everything that the Bible says. It's a lie. You can't do everything that the Bible says. So before you eat in your house, then wash your hands and your feet. How many of you are washing your feet before you eat? Huh? I, I, do, do you do that? But, but, but it's there in the Bible, so it should, we should do it. Okay? Now, look at this. Jesus Christ then stooped down. The Bible says that he stooped down and he took, he took the basin that would put water. And then Jesus Christ put a towel around his waist. Remember, he is Lord. He is the rabbi. He is a teacher. And then the Bible says then he stooped down and began to wash his, feet, the, his disciples' feet. And some of them were very uncomfortable, you know, because they say, uh, Peter was trying to say that it's me that should serve you, Jesus, not you serving me. But Jesus was trying to give an example that position does not demand being served, but it serves and as a result, then people serve back in gratitude. So this is what Jesus Christ says after he has washed their feet. This is what he said. And if then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. He says, if I'm Lord and if I'm teacher, if I'm your boss, as you may say, but you, I washed your feet. What kind of pride do you have, Peter, that you can't wash Matthew's feet? What kind of pride, Philip, that you cannot wash? Are you hearing that? So remember that Jesus does not say every time we come for service, they were not doing service, they were eating. So this does not mean that every time we come together, we should wash feet, right? But Jesus was saying that I've set you an example. That you should serve one another. Are you hearing that? You should wash each other's feet. Do not let your brothers and sisters' feet be dirty and be discovered by other people, be seen by other people, but you are there to help. All right? So, you should. He said you should. You ought. You ought. You should. Yes. You ought. You must wash each other's feet. He said, I've set you an example. You know, my translation here, I hope it does not say the same. It says, and then, it says, if I then your Lord, teacher, and washed your feet, and also you should wash 
one another's feet. For I have given you an example. Go to verse 15. For I have given you what? I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. You should do as I have done to you. How many of you know that God saves us? How many of you know, how many of you know that? Huh? If God does not continue to save us, all of us in this house will go <coughs> because he did not provide oxygen. Huh? How many of you know that the Bible says that God, God makes the sun to shine upon the good people and the bad people alike. And it causes the rain to rain upon the good and the bad. God does not say to the serial killer, no, 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 we are not getting oxygen today. All the killers, we find them fainting. If I were God, I would do that. Yeah, I would say all those who kill people, we are not breathing today. Yeah, then they'll see, they'll see people dropping, dropping on the streets and things like that. You see? But God is not like that. God brings service to us. God brings winter. God brings summer. God brings different climates. God makes sure that the soil produces the food that we need. He makes sure that we have water. He makes sure God is servicing us. So when we thank God, when we give him the praise, it is because of the things that, that he has done. I, I know some people say, I thank God for who he is. No, it's difficult. That one is a difficult thing. Just imagine God who does nothing for you. Eh? It, it, it literally does nothing for you. Are, are, are you hearing that? Eh? Can you praise God in your naked self? You want clothes, you can't have clothes. You want to do things, you can't do anything. No, you'll end up being angry. You, you always say, oh, no, go away, that God. You know, you, know, you know, God ministers to us by the things he does, by the things he provides to us. As huge and great as he is, so when we serve him back, we are now just reciprocating what God has already done to us. And we can't even match it. Are you hearing that? We can't even match it. Can't even match it. So, we should do to one another. We should do that to one another. Now, how should we serve? How should we serve? How should we serve? We serve by being productive. Somebody say, bring productive. Is either you say, bring productive, or you're being, say, bring productive. All right. We serve by being productive. We serve by being productive. God does not like useless people. Are you hearing me? Useless people. Paul says that in the house of God, he says in the house of God, in the house of the master, in the great house, he says there are different types of vessels. There's silver, there's, there's wood, there's clay, there's, you know, there's gold and things like that. And he says that if a person patches himself, if a person deals with himself, if a person deals with, the, with his attitude, if a person deals with his dilemma, his mindset, he says that person can become a great vessel usable to the master of gold. Are you hearing that? So Paul says it depends on us. It depends on what? It depends on us. Now let me, let me say, uh, okay, Romans chapter 12, verses 7. Romans chapter 12, verses 7. Romans chapter 12, verses 7. Paul says, he says, he says, ministry, he speaks about ministry and all of those they're serving, right? He says, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. Right? Now look at this. He who exalts, exalts and all of those things. He who gives, gives liberality. Uh, with liberality, right? He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now look at this please. My translation says, puts it this way. 
It said, no, this is called Pastor's Study Bible, if you don't know about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they say pastors, and I like to use it all the time. I'm surprised myself. Right, it says, if it is serving, it calls ministry serving. If it is serving, let him be active in serving. So the person who's serving, it says, let him be what? Be active in serving. Th then the other translations there, it says ministering. To minister means to do. It means you have move, you, not, not movement. It means you have effective. You are doing something. All right? So God wants us to be doing something. If you are a leader in the, in the whatever position, you better be doing something. There has to be activity. Now, it's wonderful to speak this at church because at church, there's a lot of fat, uh, fat position people who just say, I'm a leader. What are you doing? I'm a leader. Don't speak to me like that. You are speaking to the leader. Uh, are you hearing that? Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm a minister. Yeah, I'm, I'm a minister. All what they do is the, you see, that there's, no, there's no ministering, there's no service, there's no activity, there's no production, there's no movement in the department, there are no achievements, there are no stepping stones, you know, like uh, things that we can sh sh show, this is what we have done, year in, year out is the same thing, I'm a leader. <laughs> it's like a parent to say I'm a parent don't talk to me like that no daddy there's no there's no food I'm a parent <laughs> can it, can it, does it make sense it makes no sense right we have to be effective we have to be effective we have to be effective we have to have works we have to have results we have to have we have to have results Otherwise, growth is impossible. Otherwise, the people that come, they come to a redundant church, they come to a redundant department, they come to something that's, that's boring. I mean, really boring. Anything. Oh, God. Are you hearing me? Have you ever seen that? Have you ever that seen? Kids, they love, they love movement. They get interested in movement, right? I've seen, I've, I've, been, I've been looking at... Uh, 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 Jotam, he's uh, uh, dancing like Michael Jackson, right? Tasso, while, he, while he's still growing as well, he was dancing a lot like Michael Jackson. The reason why kids love Michael Jackson because he's got moves. She, kids don't grow up loving Mariah Carey. No, 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 no. no. You, you see that? It's, it's, it's unlikely. Okay, can I tell you something? I discovered even when Seppo was growing up, let me tell you, there were two, two gospel musicians that, 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 that he used to like. But he was young, you know. He did not like, uh, uh, how do you call it? <laughs> let me leave others, no. Um, <laughs> but but he, 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 loved, he loved Keke and he loved Sole Mashango, right? But if you check, those ones are not only singing. They have movements, right? 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 So kids are drawn to movement. It shows our nature. Where you are, there must be movement. If you are part of the department, there must be movement. If you are part of that youth group, there must be what? There must be movement. Because people hate redundance. Why do people complain in politics? Because if there's no movement, you're just a minister, but you are not ministering and we don't see your ministry, we don't see your service. Where there's movement, where there's production, where there's productivity, people become happy. They thrive. They thrive. 
Some people divorce because they are bored. Amen. Oh, it's 25 years we are married. There's still the security. Huh? I'm still a domestic worker. And uh, you understand that? Where there's movement, there's joy, we can look back and see where we started. We can look at the pictures and say, wow. You know, we can look at the pictures and say, you remember when we drove that car? Oh, we laughed about it. But at that time, we were serious. We were happy. Uh, we're happy because we started with a car uh, that say, as long as uh, it takes from uh, point A, B. But you cannot sit with a car of point A to B for 20 years. It, ended up, it ends up you, end up, you end up don't feel it. Huh? So at least when you move to the car that has a conditioner, you feel like you're moving, right? You know, then you move to the other one that is, you, 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 get, you get on trying to say to you. You see, so you cannot just be happy living in two room with five kids until they go to university. It, 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 it's not something that can just make you happy. You get that? Progress. Oh, it chills us out, man. Up, up. Are you hearing that? Progress. So God wants progress in his house. We cannot just be progressive in our personal lives, in our family's life, and the house of God is not progressive at all. So there has to be a balance between the two. Growth comes where there's service. Growth comes of the church where there's service, where every department holds their position, do their duties, Perform whatever they need to perform. And there's movement. When people come, they see this church is alive. Where there is no movement is in mortuary, baby. Yeah. Yeah. You must see even the people who are... Who are I'm not sure if they are security. Are they watching the corpse? What? Are they going to escape? But there are guys who are always there. You get it? Huh? I heard also some they work at night. Oh, but if it's, if it's only cops, why don't you just lock them and leave them? You think in the morning, maybe, what? One, one is going to escape. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, sorry. Forgive my ignorance. Forgive my ignorance. All right. We have to be productive. We have to be. Listen, we have to be productive. We have to be productive. I can't just be a pastor and think, oh, I'm a pastor. There has to be productivity. There has to be things that I'm showing. There has to be things that I'm seeing. There has to be certain testimonies. There has to be, just imagine a pastor, there's no testimony, nothing. Then what are you preaching for? What are you teaching for? There has to be. If there's service, then there has to be results, okay? Now, number two, how do we serve? We serve by supplying the needs. We serve by, I, I, I wrote, uh, we serve by supply, supplying the needs thereof. I don't understand what that, that means. I just heard um, people saying that. You know, it's just because when we study, they like this thereof, thereof all the time. And it makes no sense to me. But I'm saying it because, yeah, if you went to school, you must say it. <laughs> yeah, by, by supplying the needs thereof. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16. Paul says, from the whole, he says, uh, is that 16? Did I say two? 4 verse 16, please. Did I say 2? 4 verse 16. Paul says, he speaks about Jesus Christ and he, he is explaining that we are different parts of the body, right? But we are one. We are one body in Christ. Now he says, from whom? Who's whom? Jesus. He says, from whom? The whole body joined and knit together by what? By what every joint supplies. 
he is saying the whole body is joined to Christ, but the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. He says the unity of the body, the togetherness of the body, the strength of the body comes from the supplies of every organ in the body. He says the reason the body, the reason why your body is functional is because the eyes are supplying vision and the heart is pumping blood and the vessels are doing their body. Are you hearing this? So if every part of the body is doing its job, if it supplies, because every ligament in the body has to supply something to another ligament of the body. Are you hearing me? So your body is functional because of supplies that are happening within your body. If your body, listen to me please, once one part of your body stops functioning, that's why you go to the doctor. Once one part of your body gets weak, that's why you go to the doctor. Because you cannot be you when one of your organs are not functioning. If your kidneys choose not to do their work, oh baby, I'm telling you, you are out. You will have swollen feet, you will, uh, many things will happen to you. You know, just, just by one organ. I mean one organ. One, I did not say two, one. Even when you have one, your finger, your pointing finger cut. Uh -huh. You will try to point like this and people will think you, you, you are doing with the feast, you know, because one finger is missing. There's, there's a misunderstanding. Huh? Yeah, I mean this. It's like you say, I mean this. Because they can't see your finger. <laughs> huh? Because if the finger is not around, it's like you are saying, this makes no sense. Can you believe? Just a small finger will disarm you from communicating properly. Just one finger. Huh? Can you see how much important the body is? So, then it says, supplies according to the effective working by which every part, somebody say every part. Every part. Guys, all of us in the church should take part. It does not matter what part you take. You should take whatever part you have passion for, you have to take that part in order the ministry to move forward, in order for us to, to be an effective church, in order for us to be able to accommodate the crowds and the souls and the thousands of people that God has promised to us, we have to play our parts. We have to. Not occupy positions, but play our part. Right, it says that every part does what? its share. Can you see that? If every part does its share, what happens? What is the result? Come on class, what is the result? The result is what? That causes growth. It causes growth. When the church does not grow, it means that believers in that church, they are not supplying what is needed for growth to happen. I wish I could. Are you hearing me? There has to be, there has to be supply. And that will cause growth. Growth of what? Of the body. For the edifying of itself in love. CKLI is the body. We are the body of Christ. There has to be a movement. There has to be a supply. There has, to be, there has to be a supply that will result to growth. If there's no growth, somebody is not supplying. Somebody is not playing their part. Somebody is not, somebody is for, are you hearing this? We have to, by supplying. That's how we serve. Let, let me cover the last one now. What happens when we serve, when we do not serve? What happens when we do not serve? Do you want to know that? 
We're, we're just teaching like SAPC, you know. No, S. Huh? A. ABC, man. I'm, I mean ABC, man. Right? What happens when we do not serve? Well, somebody may not see the importance of serving. Somebody may be just free that they come to church and listen and go and come to church Sunday, not participate on the uh, activities that are done during the week and things like that. As long as they come to church, listen to the word and go home, so they feel that that's enough. But I'm here to say that's not enough according to the will of God for your life. What happens if you don't serve? Number one, the church becomes weak. Somebody say the church becomes weak. Say if we don't serve. Say again, if we don't serve, the church becomes weak. Yeah. If we don't serve, the church becomes weak. So as a result, the church becomes weak as a result, as, as a result, complaints will arise. Any weak church has a lot of complainers. The more weaker the church, the more complaints will come. All right? Now let's go to the book. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 6 verses 1. Acts, Acts chapter 6 verses 1. Acts chapter 6 verses 1. Look at this. Hey, this Bible person today, Aish, I uh, clear pens for whoever. They, 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 are, they are good. They are good. They are good. They are good. Now look at this, please. Look at this. The Bible says, uh, uh, let's see. Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, now there's growth. You see, the growth is coming to the church. The number of disciples are multiplying. There arose complaint. Right? There arose complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenistics. I know you don't know what all that means. Don't worry. We'll, we'll tell you one day what it means. Because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. They were what? The, 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 there, was, there was a lack of service. There, there was not enough personnel. There was not enough people to serve in that area. And as a result, certain widows that were fed in the church, they, they were neglected. And, 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 and it left them with bitter taste in their mouth. And, 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 they are, they are, you know? and the people that are related to them were quite angry. You know? You see, so, so there was a complaint. Are you hearing that? Now, so can you see? Because there's no service. There's a lack of service. Then there's complaining. If there's a lack of service, people will come and complain. We need more teachers with Sunday school. We need more leaders with youth. We need more. We need, need things like that. Because if we don't do that, people can come and complain about their kids. My kid was not taken care of. I went to the church. The service was good. The preaching was good. Everything. But you get it. Once people go to church and come back with but. Are you hearing that? You never, you may never, you are likely not to see them again. At church. Are you getting that? So if we don't serve, the church becomes weak. And complaints will arise. Right? Let's check how did they solve the problem. Go. Um, uh, verses, go. Verse 2. Is there verse 2 there? Then the 12, the disciples, the 12 uh, uh, summoned the, the multitude of the disciples, right? And said, it's not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve at the table. In other words, we are serving the word of God. We are preaching the word of God. We are teaching the word of God. We can't leave that and go to the tables and serve. 
I know some people, when, when pastors are at the table, they say they are humble. They are, div they are diverted. They are diverted. That's why they will preach boring sermons because they did not pray and they were in the, at, the, at the table serving. Ah, pastor. <laughs> oh, pastor. No, the disciples said we are not going to leave our responsibility and our serving of the word. Now go to verse 3. Therefore, brothers, seek out from among you seven men. In other words, now we need volunteers. We are choosing people, volunteers that will come and then bridge the gap so that our church will be stronger in that area. Is that clear to you? It says, choose men of, of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and things like that. Okay, let's leave that. But that's what they did. If there's a lack of service, there should be people who are challenged to occupy that space. The house of God must be not found wanting when it comes to certain things to be done in the church. When we serve, we are taking the shame off when we serve. We are taking the shame from the church. We are causing the church to look good. And we are causing people to feel comfortable and to feel that this is the place where they can worship God. Number three. Number two. Is it number two? Okay, number two. What happens if we don't serve? Number two, if we don't serve, we get diverted. We get diverted if we don't serve. In the book of Kings, chapter 2, Kings, chap 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 22. 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 22. The Bible speaks about that Naaman was sick and came to Jesus. And when he came to Jesus, and the Bible says, no, no, not to Jesus, man. Came, came to, to Elisha. Naaman had leprosy. Came, came to Elisha. And Elisha said, go dip yourself in River Jordan seven times and things like that. And then Naaman, when he was healed, then he came and he said, please, I want to give this gold and silver. I just want to thank you. And, and because he had pride. And then Elisha said, no, I don't need your gifts. Just go away with your gifts. Then the servant, the servant of Elijah <laughs> said, mm -mm, master, gold. You just reject it like that. He was serving under the man, but he said, I need that gold. Then he chased Naaman he ch without the knowledge of his master. He chased Naaman and went to Naaman and he said, all is well. My master has sent me lying. Right? My master has sent me saying, indeed, just now two young men of the sons of uh, of, of, of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. You, can you see that? So, 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 so he's lying. Why? He is a servant of who? Elisha. He's serving Elisha. That is his calling. That is his job. Now he leaves serving. He leaves the house of Elijah. He is chasing money. Some people don't know why we preach about giving. It, sa it, it saves us from loving the things of the world. It saves us from being proudful. It saves us from being diverted. So now you ended up being diverted. When we don't serve in the house of God, we get diverted. We get diverted from the goal. Let me give you the last point, then I close. What does it mean to serve? What does it mean to serve? I'll speak about two words. The first word is abad, and the second word is letroyo. Right? Abad is the, Greek, is the Hebrew word. This is what it means. It means to work. It means to enslave. It means to keep in bondage. Right? That is the Hebrew word. In other words, when you are a servant in Hebrew, it means you are enslaved. It means 
you are in bondage. But there were two types of slaves. There were slaves who were servants who have volunteered themselves to serve. But also there were slaves who were taken by force. So I'm not talking here about people who are taken by force. I talk about those people who volunteer themselves. In other words, when you serve, you are enslaving yourself voluntarily because you cannot serve and not be enslaved. To be enslaved, it means that your will goes to the direction of service. So in other words, if I serve in the church, there's no way my programs cannot be disturbed. There's no way that whatever I plan sometimes cannot be interrupted with. Listen, I've been in the church for a long time and I've served in the church for years and I'm telling you, if you serve one of the qualifications, you need to be willing to sacrifice because to serve is to be enslaved. I don't mean this in a bad way, but I mean that in a committed way that it will enslave you. You may have to alter your schedule to accommodate the work of God. You may have to. I don't say that do it all the time to the point that is detrimental to your career, detrimental to your life. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that there is a sacrifice that you need to do. So if you are not willing to sacrifice, then you are not willing to serve. Because wherever there's service, there is sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. So it means that it means that when I serve, then I bind myself. When I serve, I bind myself. When I get ordained as a pastor in the church, then I bind myself. Which means there are sacrifices that are needed from me that I need to do. There may be a person, probably at 10 o'clock, when I want to sleep and the family is calling me that they are about to commit suicide, then I sacrifice my sleep and I go there and I take care of the situation because being a servant and to serve it means sometimes you have to sacrifice touch your neighbor and say sacrifice 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 touch your neighbor and say sacrifice sacrifice Sometimes you need to work around the clock, sacrifice, sacrifice. Sometimes there's a conference, you need to sacrifice, sacrifice. Sometimes you need to arrive at home at 12 o'clock, but you are waking up at 5. We are not even paid, but we are serving. We are not just working, but we are serving. You are serving God with all your strength, with all your might, with all your mind, with all your power. There's no way that you serve and you are not sacrifice touch and even say sacrifice touch and even say sacrifice the other words is letroia this word letroia in in greek now in the new testament it means to minister it means we are called to minister when you hold the camera you are ministering you are ministering to the people who are watching life i am trying to say to you when you take the broom and you sweep the house of god you are ministering to the eyes of the people that will come to the church and look at the house of god what ever that you do when you welcome people at the gate we are ministering with a smile so that people can know that God is love and they are accepted in the house of God when you minister you sacrifice yourself standing in the cold and it's winter time you are ministering to the people when they see you parking their cars and you are shivering over there they see this man is sacrificing this God must be worthy to be praised somebody say sacrifice come on say sacrifice come on say sacrifice in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 20 the Bible says you must fear the Lord your God 
must serve him you must serve him cling to him and take oath by his name he said you must serve him to serve it does not only mean to minister to serve does not only mean uh, to be bondage but it, it means it means that you make you uplift the life of other person you make their life to shine are you I'm trying to say now these guys they want to make me preach I feel like preaching are you here I'm trying to say to you if you are working in the house of a person and you are cleaning their house when visitors come and they see the house is glittering and cleaning you have just made them shine we have just restored their dignity we have just made them to be attractive we have made them to be respected which means when I serve in the house of God I make God attractive I I make God shine. I make God, I make people to love God. The little thing that I do, it glorifies God and it lifts his name on high. Somebody say, sir. Come on, shout like a minute and say, serve say I shall serve the Lord I shall worship the Lord yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua said I and my house we shall serve God I and my children we shall serve God I and my relatives we shall serve God we shall make God shine we shall make God attractive we shall make God beautiful when you worship God some other people will see his beauty because when you serve God he becomes beautiful when you worship him he becomes beautiful when they worship him in heaven and they glorify him and they say holy holy is the lamp he becomes more beautiful than they did before the more they praise him the more glorious he becomes the more they worship him the more he shines when we serve we make God shine we make God beautiful we make God loving we make God to people to be the God that is worthy worthy to be praised somebody say sir in the Old Testament they were instructed not to serve other gods because if you serve them they will outshine your God so God was saying I don't need any idol that will be more shining than me on earth that's what he was saying. That's what he was saying. You know, when we serve, what does it mean to be served? It means that we get anointed for service. In Exodus chapter 40, verse 15, the Bible speaks about the, 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 the priest being anointed for service. Remember, you did not need to be a special man, but you needed, you needed oil upon you to be, <laughs> to be, to be poured on you, then we are ready for service. Then number three, when we serve, what does it mean when we serve? When we serve, we get delivered from idols. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus Christ speaks about money and he speaks, he speaks about money as though money were God because money is God, he is a God in fact. Jesus said, no servant, no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Bible is very careful about the words it used. It did not say you shall, you, 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 you shall not worship. Because somebody will say, no, no, no. I don't lift up my hands before money. I don't say to the money, you are worthy, you are worthy. You see? 
but it uses the word serve. So, you shall not serve, you cannot serve, and not you shall, you can choose if you want to. But you cannot serve God and money. It's impossible to serve money and serve God. Let me speak about money, then we close. Money stands for material things. Money stands for material gains. It stands for prestige things of this life, high performances and, and uh, how do you call it? And achievements, right? Jesus does not say that money is wrong. But he's saying we are wrong when we serve it. But money is not wrong. We are wrong when it controls us. We are wrong when it determines how much we can be effective in the house of God. We are wrong when we listen to its, <clears throat> its sentiments that it builds within us and then begin to follow them. We are wrong when we do that. So you cannot serve God and... Now look at this please. Do you know that on earth, because the, the, Bible, the Bible tells us that the presence of, the, of God is everywhere, right? On earth. He, he, the earth is filled with his what? His glory. It means that God is here on earth, right? Even though he's in heaven, but he's here on earth, right? So, <clears throat> God is the greatest on earth. He's the greatest where? But you know who's number two? It's money. After God, it's money. It's not even people, it's money. Money, remember, there's no human being that Christ called God. If you go to all the translations, they'll say Mormon, Mormon, the God that was worshipped, Mormon, the God of money. The greatest thing that can be delivered from is be delivered from the spirit of money. Because money has a spirit. Are you hearing me? Money has what? It has a spirit to the point that it can control you when you have it and still control you when it's not there. Huh? You wonder what, people, what, what things people do when they don't have money. And you also wonder what they do when they have money. So money does not need to be with you. Huh? It does not need to be with you. To control you. Because at times it's not even real money that controls you. That's why the Bible says the love of money. That's where the control is. How many of you know that love controls. <clears throat> How many of you know that? Huh? Love controls. As somebody was suggesting that women must stop calling men babies. And I really support that. Some other men are too big for that. When they say, baby, you look at him, say, hey, hey, hey. love is blind. <laughs> it's even worse when it comes, it comes to closers. Sometimes they don't even say baby, they say baby. Uh, B, 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 B. <laughs> Wes. Don't call men that thing. <clears throat> Please, let them grow. Then you, then you send him to shop to say, Please, baby, carry bread and margarine. He comes, he comes with bread and soap. 
You said, baby, don't be angry. <laughs> yeah, don't be angry. So as we close, we're going to continue next week. And I hope that you join hands and we join hands together and respond to the church growth challenge. <clears throat> and that each and every one of us will be willing to take our part and that will grow this church together. Ah, are you hearing that? Amen. Let's clap hands for Jesus. Amen.